Warning, the podcast you're about to hear has a unique conservative perspective and may be politically incorrect, containing some controversy in its message. This episode may speak out against liberalism, socialism, the dark state, and religious organizations. It is possible that evil in politics, education, law, society, and religion will be discussed and exposed. However, we believe this podcast adds truth and value to a mature, disenfranchised audience who may be tired of apostate religions and wicked world systems. Listeners who are easily offended, overly sensitive, or have progressive leanings sympathetic to the topics we expose should be forewarned not to listen any further. We thank both those who choose to listen as well as those who choose not to listen. You've been warned. And now, let us get on with the show. Hello. <laughs> what year is it? It's 2018. But today's date is January 5th. I know. Crazy, Miss Kapow. Uh-huh. Crazy. Just like crazy news. Crazy stuff. All on Freedom Friday. On Freedom Friday. Really, man. Uh we got to yeah. talk about some weird stuff. We've got five good stories. Yeah. Just, you know what? Uh, 2018, I'm sorry to be a pessimist. No, I, not you. Yeah, I'm really You're sorry. the most positive person I know. I know. <laughs> I just see the silver lining. In my dreams. <laughs> Dude, it's not, it's just going to get weirder and weirder. It's hard to imagine. You know, it's like a reality show. Yep. It is insane. But before we get going, I want to give a shout out and I want to thank, I want to thank David McIntosh from Canada. Yes. Thank you, David. Thank you. Dave, what David did is he, uh, he supported us financially, gave us a little gift, a little love offering and boy, we really, really appreciate it. And, um, you could do two things. If you if the Lord leads that on your heart to do that, that's that's fine. Um, you could go to either of our websites or desk sites because on the mobile it doesn't it doesn't work. You have to go to the desktop site. You can go fifthhookmedia.com or kapowradioshow.com and there's a donate button there. Or you can just go to paypal.me slash fifth hook media paypal.me slash fifth hook media. If the Lord so puts that on your heart, but just by you, I want to say this really, but just by you listening, being here, you're supporting because if you weren't listening, then I'm talking to the wall, which I do anyway. And, and Miss Kapow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she gets the whole brunt of my screaming. And so do it for her. If you don't do it for anybody else, do it for her, man. Uh so we do appreciate the support. And on that note, okay, on that note, there is other support uh, that's really important, and it's called prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer. And it goes it goes both ways. So we really appreciate any prayers that you get when you just, the Lord leads it on your heart. Go, ah, just give the kapows discernment, wisdom, grace, peace, and, you know, half a brain to continue what they're doing would be nice. The other thing I want to mention, and we don't talk about it a whole lot anymore, but Miss Kapow has a prayer team, a real team. Mm -hmm. She has uh, folks that are dedicated to praying for other people's needs. Yeah. So if a need comes her way, right? If she's aware of something, she then sends out this email to this team, knowing everybody on this team is actually going to pray. Yeah. They're actually called, um, they're gifted in this area, I should say. Yeah. They're gifted and they will actually perform it and do. And so they communicate with each other and pray for people's needs. And then there's follow up like, oh, this is what happened. This is what happened. It's really, really vital, especially in today's age and where we're going, where we're at and where we're going to continue to go, that we don't need to go it alone. Right. We really don't need to go it alone. And I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times uh, Ms. Kapow has 
put her team into action on my behalf. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just recently I had this horrible cough. I couldn't get rid of. Mm-hmm. I was just hacking all the time, coughing, coughing. I thought I had lung cancer, you know, mm-hmm. uh, horrible. And uh, she put her team under prayer and praying. And you know, that thing went away. Praise the Lord. You know, it went. <coughs> no, it did. It went away. And uh, I mean, when, last year when I had that sciatica, I was down for three or four months physically mm-hmm. uh, with, with really bad sciatica. So, um, you know, you get attacked now and then and you don't need to go it alone. So I just want to say if you're gifted in that area, you may not be gifted in it. So don't feel bad. But if you're gifted in the area and you feel that this is something you want to do, I want you to get a hold of Miss Kapow at Linda at kapowradioshow.com. Yes, please. And do you have anything to, to say about it? Well, you, you could add well, a little to it. No, I just want to say that um, the team that um, I have, these people are, they have a burden for the body of Christ. And they're very serious about praying for those needs. And every month um, we get an, um, I send out a prayer request and it has all the different um, needs that I have come become aware of. And we pray over that for the whole month. And then sometimes during the month, we'll, you know, I'll get an email like, oh, Miss Kapow, please pray for this, da 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 da. And I'll send that to my, um, to the prayer team. And we pray about it. And then, you know, and then when the results come, you know, that God had answered the prayer or whatever, um, we get follow up. So if, if you are interested in this ministry and you want to help, uh, pray about these needs, please contact me, contact me, and I'll be glad to, um, add you to our, uh, list. Or if you have a need and you want us to pray, uh, please let me know or brother Kapow know. And, um, and I will let my, the prayer team know, and we will pray for you. Yes. So it goes both ways. That's what I said. So if you have a need and you need prayer, don't go it alone. I mean, this we're really in perilous, perilous times. We need each other. Yeah, because it's, uh, you can go sideways so easy. And the enemy's just all around attacking in every area of life that uh, they can. Mm-hmm. Every area of life. Or even if you need some encouragement or something, let mm-hmm. us know because we'd like to encourage you and, you know, pray with you and lift you up. So. Yeah. So that's a big thing. So there's, uh, like I said, support is, um, you know, different, different ways. We appreciate you listening. Appreciate your prayers. If you want to be involved in praying, that's good and everything. But we thank uh, David McIntosh from Canada for helping us financially mm-hmm. this month. And we appreciate that. Uh, what I'm going to try to do in the future, I just got to carve out some time. I am busy, folks, if you really don't know. But it's hard for me to carve out time. I There's some, like, special topics I want to do and to make privatized shows. So those who donate, I'm going to give a code to the privatized show and to get this these topics that I don't necessarily want out to the public. You know, because they're about uh, maybe internet security or, you know, how to handle law enforcement, <laughs> you know, things like that. So, uh but I, I'm going to do that. But in the meantime, um, you know, if you haven't read uh, Christianity or Blasphemy or whatever, I'll send you a, a free ebook that you can download in any any format you can imagine, that type of thing. So just to show, you know, how much we appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank yeah. you. Good night. And that's it. <laughs> do you have a scripture before we start? I do. Okay. It starts off with Genesis 6, 5, and it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then we go to the New Testament in Romans one twenty one that says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified not at him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. That is one of, to me, really, that's one of the saddest scriptures, the the one in Genesis, because it says he regretted, he repented that he made man. Yeah. To me, it's just so sad, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Our first story is, uh, come on. It's, uh, 
Lord, give me wisdom to bite my tongue on this one. It's this 10-year-old boy. It's a 10-year-old kid. He's a child. He's 10 years old. And these adults, man, his, I want to say parents, but I doubt if he has a dad in his life. I, I doubt it. Parents, grandparents, cousins, I don't know, whoever's around him and other adults that are now taking advantage of this kid's mental illness. He's a 10-year-old boy and he has founded a drag club for kids so they can express themselves in what he calls a positive, encouraging, and safe space. Mm. You know, kids don't talk like that. No. Um, In fact, when you do hear him, because he's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. He's all over YouTube. And uh, when you hear him talk, yeah, it's like he's been scripted. He's been scripted. He talks like a uh, you know a twenty year old gay guy. Uh, th- this kid is is so so gay. He's so lost, and these adults are. It should be against the law. Mm-hmm. It really is a crime because this is a child who's brain dead. He he's brain dead. He doesn't have the life experience to make these kind of decisions. No, any adult knows that. And this is to me, it's just is just absolutely horrible, and it's so indicative of where we're at, yeah, and where where we're going to continue to go. So his name is Desmond uh, Napoles. Mm-hmm. I don't know Napoles. I don't know. Uh, he's from Brooklyn, New York. And he's better known by his drag name, Desmond is Amazing. <laughs> snap, snap, three snaps in the whistle. <laughs> Desmond is Amazing. And he started dressing up uh, when he was a toddler. Yep. And so he started wearing dresses at age six. And you know what? His mom, and I doubt, like I said, I doubt if he has a dad. But his mom, his grandparents, they said that was okay. Yep. You know, yeah, it's okay. Uh, let's not stop him. Let's not correct him. He has since appeared in a music video with RuPaul. Yep. And his performance at Gay Pride in New York in 2015 went viral. I remember seeing that and it was absolutely repulsive. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Here's this little kid and he's twerking and dancing and it was addressed gay. Mm-hmm. And it it was so pedophilic yeah. is that a name is that a word pedophilic i, I think so. i just made i think it up. is i think it is <laughs> it, it it was repulsive yeah like like projectile vomit repulsive he's an active member in the lgbtq community and desmond now desmond is amazing now wants to inspire other young people kids your kids your grandkids your children your great grandkids. He wants to inspire these kids and promote anti bullying and suicide prevention. Mm-hmm. What a piece of. T- yeah. Beep, beep, bleep. Really? Really? This is going to inspire anti bullying and suicide prevention. When you're trying to make a kid a freak at a freak show, the other kids at school are not going to uh, steal his lunch money. Oh, gosh. He's launching House of Amazing, or House of Amazing, H-A-U-S? What mm-hmm. is that? Mm-hmm. Is that German? I don't know. It's a drag club for drag kids. And he hopes to have a fashion and cosmetic line in the future also. Oh, well, yeah. You know that's going to come. There, and there's something wrong with this kid's face. If you look at his face, I do think he's he's mentally challenged. I do. Yeah, he he's at least he's autistic or has Asperger's or something. He's not right, um, and that's the crime behind this that these adults are marketing this. This yeah, yeah, they're exploiting him. This lizard that's boy, like, yeah. yeah. So this article is from the Daily Mail. It says drag clubs are nothing new in New York. But it took this 10-year-old to dream up the first drag club for children. Mm. Come on, is that legal? And you legal? wonder if that's even true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's laying in bed and thought of this. Yeah. So he's kind of a celebrity. 
uh, in his own right. And he's convinced this brain dead human at age 10, he's brain dead. He doesn't, I'm not being mean. I'm being serious. People on alcohol, drugs, they're brain dead. Children under a certain age are brain dead. They don't have enough experience in life to have an active mind. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's why there's parents. That's why you raise children until they, they, they develop their mental, spiritual and mental capacities. Yeah. It says that he's convinced that there are more kids out there like him. So now he has launched house of a of amazing and it's the first and only drag club for kids where no adults are allowed. That should not be legal. No. What could possibly go on in there with just kids? Ay ay ay. If you get a chance, people, go to our Fifth Hook Media, our Facebook page on Fifth Hook Media. There's pictures, and you got to look at this guy, this child, dressed up. Ugh. <sighs> when he was younger, he would fashion bed sheets and towels into dresses and wigs, and he would clomp up and down the hallway in his mother's high heels. I'm telling you, there's not a dad. There's not a father here. Mm -mm. Ever since day one, ever since I was able to walk, he says, I used to make my mom's towels and take her high heels and clomp around the house. I'd put the towels on my head. I'd wrap up a towel around my body and walk the runway down my house. <sighs> and he, he revealed that. He told that to Out. I guess that's a magazine. Out magazine. Mm -hmm. oh, so proud of you, Desmond. Wish you proud. At age five, he liked to play with toy trains, maps, video games, and Barbies. But he was six. An Elsa from Frozen costume changed everything. Wow. And Desmond started asking his parents, huh. and it says parents, I want to know where the dad is, for, well, it doesn't mean there's a, there's a male. It could be mom and mom. You know what I mean? Or an Ahab dad. Yeah, Ahab dad. Brain, brain dead Ahab dad. Uh, so he started asking his parents for princess costumes or dresses when they were out shopping. Mm -hmm. I just think it's interesting that, that at age six, what, what changed everything was, was an Elsa from Frozen. Yeah, which costume. is Walt Disney. Walt Disney, yeah. So admitting that they were concerned about how other people might perceive their son, Desmond's parents consulted a therapist for advice on what to do. Good job. Good parenting right there. I don't know what to do. My kid's acting really gay and strange and look, you know, asking for feet. age six. He wants to dress like a chick with a high. And so I don't know. I'm going to go talk to a therapist. And Tell the, me what to do. And the therapist advised him that the best course of action was to do nothing. That's a good chunk of advice. And right let there. him develop naturally and explore his own taste in clothing, toys, and activities. He's six years old. <laughs> He's brain damaged. He's brain damaged at six years old. Desmond's love of dressing up didn't falter. And his first big break in drag came in 2014 when he was featured in the music video for Jinx Monsoon's The Bacon Shake. Alongside his hero, RuPaul, and B-52 lead singer Fred Schneider. Wow. So he's not some just little kids, you know, hunkered away in the bedroom, acting gay. They're promoting this guy. Sure. In June 2015, he took part in the gay pride in New York City. He, he wore a rainbow tutu and a gold beret. And his parents went viral. Just went viral. Mm -mm -mm. He's got a fan club. Um, his mom's friends set up a Facebook fan page named Death Men is Amazing. For all his fans to get in touch. Mm. I don't see anything about a father though. It's just parents. I bet she's uh, I bet she's a lesbo. Shimini. I bet. So uh let's see. So they dedicated this Facebook page it to it dedicated to his journey. He's on a journey, you see. Mm-hmm. 
Desmond is amazing. Facebook page gave Desmond the idea to use the same moniker as a stage name. Although he's only 10, he's an Advent drag style. It has evolved to incorporate his biggest inspirations, RuPaul, Andy Warhol, and Keith Haring. I don't mm-hmm. know who that is. Haring? Yeah, I don't know. He also cites 1970s disco and designers like Gonde Gargons, Alexander McQueen, Vivienne Westwood, John Gallian, Telly Mimbul, Betsy Johnson, which I have no idea who these people are, nor do I care. And I'm glad I don't know who they are, because if I knew who they are, I would be gay. <laughs> well, I'm kind of I'm kind of dressed up kind of cool right now. I got some uh, sweatpants on. Yeah, but you're not. And a uh, Eddie Bauer t-shirt. You know, very manly. Yeah, but you know, I'm into fashion. You know, I got some quarter socks on. Yeah. Well, he's part of the drag culture. He refers to himself as a drag kid rather than a drag queen. Explaining the term should only refer to adults. Mm. Uh, he has a website too, Miss Capel. Oh, of course. You know what he writes on there? People should be able to dance, sing, or dress in any way. You can express yourself however you want. It doesn't matter if you like jazz or rap, ballet or ballroom, dresses or suits. You can just do you. Wow. You, see you know, and that does sound like a 10-year-old, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it sound like he thought thought that up? I mean, you see how that's all mixed up? Well, yeah, you can sing or dance. I mean, those are, those are options. It's like I'm not a dancer, but I'd rather sing. You know, well, you can dress your, your fashion. Yeah, you dress, you know, you can express yourself in your fashion. Jazz or, you know, different music. Ballet, ball. but then he goes, dresses or suits, just be you. Mm-hmm. Just be you. He's a fan of dancing. And he started taking ballet lessons at age six. Huh, I wonder why he turned gay. He currently is the youngest member of the iconic house of Ultra Om. Mm. What the heck is this stuff? I feel like I'm on another planet reading things. I know it. What's the iconic house of Ultra Om? It sounds something. very demonic. Is it Om like Om? Well, like Hinduism? Kind of like it. Like it Om, like, huh? give me a demon. Give me a demon to inhabit my little flesh suit. I want to be a serpent. These are sons of Belial. These are serpent seed. This uh, this poor little guy. He's He's gone. Desmond is above all a natural performer. He hopes to facilitate other young people. This is it. He hopes to facilitate your kids and your grandkids or your great grandkids. He hopes to facilitate that. Who share the same interest by providing a safe space at House of Amazing. Mm. So all the little kids could be in a safe space, uh, dress up draggy, be a drag uh, kid. You know, it's just pedophilia all over the place here. Sure is. It's just pedophilia, folks. Oh, it's the first and only drag house exclusive for kids. They're doing amazing drag. He already made some announcements. The club shared a letter to haters. Okay. So this letter is to me because I'm a hater. I hate what he's doing. Hmm. I absolutely hate what he is, what he's become and what he's trying to influence other children to be. I absolutely hate that. I won't make any apologies for that. So here's the letter he wrote to people like me. It says, uh, the club shared a letter to haters writing positive message like, your words do not hurt me. I am secure in who I am and you will not change me. I will be myself always. So I'm not trying to hurt this kid. I'm not trying to hurt these these brain damaged people. Um, And I'm not trying to change them. I'm just trying to uh, warn others. So although he's an active member of the LBTGQ poo 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 community, (laughs) where he's involved in anti-bullying and suicide prevention. See, he came out last year as being gay. He's 10. He doesn't even have hair on his underarms. (laughs) His parents are emphatic. And they keep saying parents. I want to know who these animals are Mm -hmm. his parents are emphatic that their son is not yet sexually active i should hope not at age 10 he's not even producing stuff yet come on 
And although he's an advocate for LBGDQ poo poo rights, he has not reached the age where sexual relations are appropriate or discussed explicitly. But yet you let him dress up like a girl and let pedophilia people just oogle all over him. <laughs> That's nice. Mm. And his mom, her name is Wendy Lou. Of course. She acknowledges that Desmond is an inspiration to others. She also revealed to Out that her son has been subjected to criticism. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> I like this. He goes, uh, here's a thing on his website for, for haters. He says, dear haters, your words do not hurt me. I'm secure in who I am. <laughs> He's 10. He's secure in who he is. He's 10. You will not change me. I always be myself. Always. You will never stop me. I am the future. I don't know about that. Mm. Because you're never going to get a job. You're never going to work. You'll only you'll only be an entertainer and a uh, prostitute. You'll be a sex worker for the rest of your life. And then he says, you will not shame me unlike you. I am not a bully. Mm. Brother Capel, I'm not a bully like you. <laughs> and then he says, you mean nothing to me. You are like a fly I threw away. And he ends it with, love is strong, hate is weak. Okay. Well, you know, put me in my place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway he wants people to mind their own business if you don't like it don't look at it his ultimate goal is to own his own fashion and cosmetic line but in the meantime he's committed to getting house of amazing up and running mm. and that's what he's gonna do so he's obviously getting a whole lot more press than uh than the kapow radio show so <laughs> he's probably right in that respect <laughs> He's on the Daily Mail. I only yeah. read the Daily Mail. <laughs> he has go. actually got an article about him on the Daily Mail. He's only 10. So I would say the world standard wise, yeah, he's a lot more successful than I am when it comes to that. So, uh, but that's okay. That's I'm not fine. a gay drag kid. Uh, what else was Kapow? And the next story is about top secret U.S. satellite is launched by SpaceX, which aims to send unknown group mystery messages. This is one of the stupidest it is, articles it? I've read all year, and I'm only five days into the year. It, it's, it's poorly written. It's dumb. I think it's fake news. I really do. I mm -hmm. think I do not believe this at all. It's just absolutely stupid. The headline, you know, makes you think top secret. SpaceX, that's, you know, that's, um, what's his face? Is uh, Elon Musk. Is, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Is, 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 is. Say that, say that was sausage. <laughs> Elon Musk is, is, is like to eat some sausage. Is, is, is. <laughs> <laughs> Do that while you're wearing your tutu. Yeah. <laughs> and running and clomping down the hallway mm. in your mother's high heels. Equally. I'll give me some sausage. Is, is, is. Elon Musk. Is, is, is. So anyway, Elon Musk launched a SpaceX. It's It's like. Messages to unknown mystery group. Okay. So you read, I'm reading it thinking, oh, this, you know, this might be good, right? Well, it's stupid. It's uh, the top secret satellite, top secret, right? It's so top secret that it, they're doing an article about it on the express.co.uk mm -hmm. website. That's how secret it is, folks. And the SpaceX <laughs> is codenamed. Project Zuma. Zuma. Mm -hmm. Zuma. And the Air Force, the United States Air Force, has confirmed this. Oh, well, see, it's got to be true then. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a mysterious project. It'll see the private space agency launch the satellite, allowing an unnamed government organization to send messages or take photos. Now, one of the few scraps of information, Ms. Kapow, that's a currently secret. available. A no, secret. it's currently available. Nah. It's revealed Zuma will enter a low orbit around Earth. Mm. That really makes my day. But what the mission is or what it's supposed to do, no one knows. But check this out. Check this out. It's supposed to be launched from uh, the Kennedy, Kennedy Space Center mm -hmm. in uh, Florida. Yeah. Uh, it was penciled in for the middle of November, but they had to push it back because, you know, they, they had problems. It's one of those Falcon 9 deals, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
Elon Musk firm has carried out government missions before, but never as secretive. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's on the express.co.uk website. So secretive. So here's where it gets really dumb. <laughs> here's where we're going with this. We just talked about a drag kid. That's it's so brain damaged. Here's some more brain damaged stuff for brain damaged people. News of the mysterious satellite comes after SpaceX program was revealed to be planning to send a Tesla to Mars. There you have it. That's just good English right there, by the way. Mm -hmm. To send a Tesla to Mars. Are you serious? Okay. Does that sound stupid? Very. It gets more and more stupid. The car will reportedly be playing David Bowie's Space Oddity on a loop. They want to start war, don't they, with the space aliens? <laughs> yes, because <laughs> these little green men hate David Bowie. They don't. They what they want is some like classic vintage rock. Mm-hmm. They 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 want some Zeppelin or something. They don't want David Bowie. Can you imagine how annoying that would be to a little green man? Well, that's what I'm thinking. And then here's this Tesla, Tesla flying around the Mars. This is the, this is what we're doing with technology, really. Isn't there people out there dying of cancer and things like that? Correct me if I'm wrong. <sighs> the billionaire businessman took to social media. Mm-hmm. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and to announce that he will send a Tesla car to Mars. And he announced on Twitter that he will be sending not just any Tesla, Ms. Powell, a cherry Tesla Roadster. Ooh. That's brain damage thinking. And to think that's even cool would be brain damaged. What's wrong with people? Mm-hmm. He wants to send it to orbit Mars. And he wants it to play David Bowie's Space Oddity on repeat. And that it would be in deep space for a billion years or so if it doesn't <laughs> blow up on the ascent. <laughs> <clears throat> now, let me ask you this. I'm not a Tesla guy. I've never looked under the hood of a Tesla. But that's got to be one hell of a battery. Yeah, I would think so. To keep playing David Bowie's Space Oddity over and over again for a billion years. Well, ever ready. Yeah, I guess they can get the rabbit up there. Okay, but later on, Elon Musk backpedaled on his statement. And he said he was not sure if SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket craft would carry the electric vehicle to the Red Planet. Hmm. Um, but now he's left no doubt in anyone's mind that SpaceX will be sending a car to Mars after he posted a series of pictures on Instagram of the red Tesla Roadster inside the Falcon Heavy. That's what it's called. Falcon mm-hmm. Heavy or Heavy. I don't know. Uh, alongside these images, Mr. Muthgathith put, test flights of new rockets usually contain mass simulators in the form of concrete or steel blocks. Okay. Uh, He says that seemed extremely boring. Of course, anything boring is terrible, especially companies. So we decided to send something unusual, something that made us feel. The payload will be an original Tesla Roadster playing space oddity on a billion year elliptic Mars orbit. Really? Really? Oh, boy. Really? Wow. There's no words, really. I, 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 You know what? I'm inspired. I'm inspired um, for 2018. I just think we're reaching a pinnacle of... It's just smartness. We're so smart. I like the the comments. This one guy <laughs> says, When Obama and Hillary escape Earth... They will need a communication device in order to direct the resistance. <laughs> it could be it. So they could, uh, they could drive. They, they'll have their little a roadster up there, too, in Mars. Exactly. Wow. 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 
It's, it's crazy. It is nuts. It's a top secret uh, satellite. Top secret. But now we know they're going to send a Tesla up there. So it can't be that top secret, folks. <laughs> okay. Let's take a uh, commercial break. Right. And then I have to talk about this dude who murdered his parents on uh, New Year's <sighs> Eve. Yeah. And let everybody know what he was going to do. Crazy. Okay, we'll be back. Hello, Kapow Radio Show listener. You came here to get assistance, knowledge, or perhaps to be part of a unique community that exposes evil. We thank you for your compassionate and strong prayers through the years. Since 2011, we have had over 370,000 listens to over 1,000 episodes of free Bible teaching and spiritual commentary. However, we are experiencing rising production costs within our podcast hosting platforms, free apps, online advertising, website hosting, and aging equipment. We continue to finance the cost in order to bring a unique biblical message to the listener free of charge. You can share in that work while expanding the message to new global audiences. Would you consider a small donation? Share because the world has become much darker and needs to hear truth. It only takes a minute by going to the desktop sites of kapowradioshow.com or fifthhookmedia.com and clicking the donate button. We thank you in advance for any small amount that is placed upon your heart and for joining us in the kingdom against powers of wickedness. Woo, I just made it back in. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I was uh I was clomping down the highway. <laughs> uh, yeah. I had a pair of your high heels on. I'll admit it. That's was, where my shoes went. And I was clomping. Because when I saw the costume of Spider Man, it changed everything. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was a gay spider. Well, now you've widened the, my shoe, I'm sure. It doesn't matter. We share the same clothes. What's mine is mine. What's yours is mine. You know that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Sons Nigh Murder. Ugh. I think this was uh, France. I think. France. France. Yeah. He posted a countdown. Online, ahead of his gruesome attack. And no one knew. No one knew. No one cares. Um, Yeah, it's French. It's a French story. Mm. A man, he's being questioned by the Popo in France, after he allegedly posted a countdown to his mother's decapitation online. Before Mm. actually stabbing the woman to death and wounding his father. The 61-year-old woman died at a house at the French town of, I'm not going to even say it, uh, in the early hours of January 1st after receiving stab wounds to the throat. Wow. And then a second person, a man, received injuries in the attack. In the attack. And this was done by their 36-year-old son of the couple. Mm-hmm. Brain damaged yeah, Man. he's 36, okay? Mm-hmm. He's 36 and he's brain damaged. See what I'm saying? People, mm-hmm. They're brain damaged. You know what I mean? They don't have... <sighs> that's what that's what reptilians do. That's what happens when they take over the flesh suit. It doesn't, doesn't mix with the DNA, folks. Mm-mm. Well, now we know that a grisly countdown to murder had been posted on the internet prior to this attack. Oh. Yes. And uh, what he did, there's a France TV info or something. Mm -hmm. I guess they did a screen grab of the countdown and it reveals that it's titled Decapitation of Therese H. Mm -hmm. And the post sets the date for the gruesome act as January 1st, identifies a location for the attack and the whole bit. It's thought that he turned up at the house just before midnight on December 31st, as a party was underway, this 36-year-old brain-damaged knucklehead uh, killed this woman, stabbed his father, and uh, there you have it. Wow. There you have it. Can you imagine? And he, he posted the countdown, 
on the internet. See, that's disgusting. This goes Talk about premeditated murder. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he, I don't think he even thought about the law or anything. Just they don't care. You know? Wow. Just just a reptilian. Wow. Uh, these these creatures are something. Sons of Belial. Sons of Belial, Serpent Seed, Sons of Satan. It's all the it's all the same. It's the 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 spiritual genetic, the DNA, it's all mixed up. There's only one way out of it. You folks yep. know that. Only one way out of it. Yep. Do and uh, it's just a matter of the degree that people are um, possessed. Mm-hmm. Here's uh, wow. here's one that's uh, kind of sad and 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 stupid at the same time. Can you have sad and stupid? Yes. I feel it's sad because of these people uh, that believe this lie, and it's stupid because um, they believe this lie. Mm-hmm. It's a satanic suicide. Yeah. It's a tourist couple. They were found dead on a Greek island. A satanic suicide. Wow. Really. They were found dead in a Greek guest house on New Year's Eve, and they died by suicide during a satanic ceremony, it appears. Wow. Wow. This this gal was only 23 years old. 23. Wow. Yeah. Uh, she was reported missing by her family back in June. Wow. Now they found her, but they found her dead. She was with a 30-year-old dude. In a rented room in the village of somewhere on the island of somewhere. (laughs) I'm not going to even go there. The bodies were found on New Year's Eve by the owner. And they had been staying there since uh, the day after Christmas. Ooh, stinky winky. Yeah, but here's what they found. Knives, candles, and a satanic pentagram were found Mm. at the scene. And the police believe that the couple may have taken part in a satanic ritual. Wow. Yes. The coroner's report said that the woman died first by cutting herself with a blade. Probably a wrist, I would imagine. And the man then allegedly stabbed himself in the heart while in the bath. Wow. So obviously, I I mean, I think they were, they were some kind of ultimate sacrifice. Uh, for their their god and unfortunately very very unfortunately they can't unring that bell no that bell has been rung and you can't there's nothing you can do now so yeah but these satanic rituals are are increasing at least they're being made manifest yeah to us you know to the world that these things are going on and people are doing them just like, it's kind of like just going to shopping now at Walmart or something. You mm-hmm. know? Um, I haven't heard about those uh, weird witches. I'm, I'm sure they're still doing it. Oh, yeah. Every new moon, they hex Trump. <laughs> Jiminy. Yeah. How's, how's that working out? Yeah. Mm. Well, they're going to they're gonna reap these. Um, oh, yeah. From it. You know what I mean? You can't mess around with this stuff. No, nope. um, a lot more. Eventually, powerful they're going to have to. They they will reap from it, and it will not be pretty. No, and in this case, once that bell's rung and, and death occurs, ah, you're screwed. Man. Yeah, it's not like uh, you just. Screwed. This is not fair. <laughs> no. Yeah, I didn't know. I was only 23 years old, and I'm brain damaged. Jeez, folks. Yeah. <sighs> Let's end on a lighter note. Really? I think I think this is lighter. You think? Well. It's, <laughs> I don't know about this lady, so I can't really call her brain damaged. So mm-hmm. that's lighter. Okay. I mean, it could happen. All I can say is, you know, maybe she was, uh, you know, at AM, PM, at four o'clock in the morning, wolfing down uh, one of them AM, PM hot dogs, throwing some ketchup and mustard and uh, relish on that bad boy. Mm-hmm. Didn't realize she ate the ketchup packet. Six years ago. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe alcohol was involved. I don't know. Yeah, because apparently she can't remember. She can't remember ever eating a meal where she used a ketchup packet. Yeah, no, that, I can't believe that. I don't either. I don't either. But who am I? Who you, am I? You're right. 
Who Doc- are we? The doctors found ketchup packet stuck in a woman's intestine for six years. Mm-hmm. Well, she was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, right? Mm-hmm. And she just kept, and they were treating her with it, by, um, treating her for it. And, um, but she just kept complaining about abdominal pain and bloating. So they did surgery and they found these uh, pieces of plastic with the word Heinz on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why is that funny? Uh, I just find that funny. And yet... She has no memory of ever using a ketchup packet. Oh, wow. She's 40, 41 years old. She can't remember a meal where she may have accidentally swallowed. Of course not. She's very proper. I would never eat an AM PM hot dog at four in the morning (laughs) under a drunken stupor. Nor would I use those little packets. Those. Yeah. Reprehensible packets of mustard and ketchup and (laughs) mayo. (laughs) <laughs> well oh it got in there somehow yeah um i don't know how you wolf that down without knowing it but it was in her gut <laughs> yeah for six years <laughs> yeah and apparently that's what caused uh, the crohn's like symptoms and her constant pain yeah so they tried to relieve some massive inflammation in the woman's intestines when they opened her up and the reason why she did surgery is because they couldn't figure out why all the Treatments for Crohn's disease was failing. They couldn't understand that. So we're going to open her up. Opened her up. And uh, they found, like you said, two pieces of plastic bearing the word Heinz. <laughs> and um, so somehow she swallowed a ketchup wrapper. It lodged in her small intestines. And that packet had actually cut into the woman's stomach. And it caused the Crohn's-like symptoms. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So I guess she's okay now. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah. So to to the doctor's knowledge, they say it's the first uh, report ever of a synthetic plastic packaging causing. Uh, there's some technical term to it, but it's a uh, it's a perforation that mimics Crohn's disease. Hmm. Amazing. So they went on to say that once the six year old condiment pouch was taken out, her insides begin to return to normal. And she's reportedly has no memory of using a ketchup packet. Can't remember a meal where she may have accidentally swallowed one. So I'm going with the alien abduction theory. <laughs> and I mean, this sounds crazy, but I think it they could give you happen. packets of uh, ketchup. Either that or they have abdu- they abducted her. Okay, <gasps> they have French fries. Yes. Aliens. While they're listening to David Bowie's Space Oddity in a Tesla. They're doing experiments on this woman. One of the little gray aliens spills his little peck up, peck up, peck up, peck up, ketchup in her gut. <laughs> he was just sharing his uh, French fries with her. Exactly. So they're actually, that's, you know what? That could be the disclosure. Aliens are not. That's the secret. That's the secret that uh, the government has McDonald's. McDonald's. Ronald McDonald is actually an alien. Oh, my goodness. I, you know what? We should yeah, write a book. We should. We should write a book. Okay, before closing, I just want to say, uh-huh. really, I don't, have a, I don't have it in front of me. Mr. Capel. <laughs> it's on space.com. But the 31st of January, there's mm-hmm. going to be a blood, uh, blood red moon, but there's going to be a total eclipse of the moon that's that, that we'll be able to see partially here in Nevada. Nevada. Uh, some, I think it's like a little before four in the morning, but well, it's I'll really, be, I'll still be asleep. Mm, I'm going to, I'm going to be up eating, okay. eating uh, hot ketchup. dogs at AM PM dude. Cause that's what I do. <laughs> that's the best <laughs> eating time there. And, <laughs> and uh, you ever have the nachos there? At four, you know, four in the morning at AM, PM. No. When I worked graveyard, yeah, I would go in there. And well, eat, I can eat, imagine. Eat, well, eat. now you tell me. I didn't know you eat that stuff. Yeah, who knows what's in my gut? I could have an alligator in there. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you never know what you ate at four in the morning at working graveyard at AM, PM. But yeah, I've had those nachos there. I don't know what that cheese is made out of, but Ugh. it has something to do with some kind of oil byproduct oh. from the refineries. 
But anyway, here's the deal. This this uh, on the thirty first, it's a blood red moon. It's a full moon. Obviously, it's a big super moon thing. There's all kinds of stuff going with it, and it's uh, it's very rare. We haven't had it since yeah, the eighteen hundreds here in America, and blah blah blah. But what's interesting, you know, uh, everybody's not everybody, but there's some idiot out there who wrote a book going to say Jesus returns or whatever. But it's just it's just interesting uh, these uh, these signs in the skies that are happening. And we had apparently the biggest moon of the year already. Um, January 1st. Yes. September have. 31st to January 2nd, actually. Uh, was this big, huge? It, we were walking the dogs on, on those nights, and we looked up and we saw this huge moon with this huge ring, you know, yeah, around it. Definitely, quite amazing. And uh, it was already a super moon, one of the brightest, biggest moons of the year. Already happened, uh, you know, within a day into the new year. But this thing coming up to thirty first is very rare. It's just interesting um, that. Some of these signs are happening. It's going to be a blood red, blue moon, super moon, dog, wolf howling, you know, uh, space oddity, David Bowie, kind of a moon, Tesla. You're going to see a Tesla driving through it. It's going to be really awesome. Mm, mm, so mm. I suggest you go to AM, PM. Hey, huh. you can go to AM, PM, dress like a drag kid mm-hmm. in your mama's high heels. Mm-hmm. And uh, get a ketchup packet stuck up your nose. <laughs> hey, you know what, Ms. Capow? Mm-hmm. I shouldn't tell this story because it's a personal story, but I'm going to tell it real quick before I leave. Ms. Capow could verify this because mm-hmm. she laughed. She laughed at my calamity. <laughs> but years ago, <laughs> years ago, I had a little, I had a cough. I had another cough. Oh, I had a no, tick. See, one. you're laughing. <laughs> I had a cough <clears throat> and I, what I had, was like, it was like a, a rattle in my chest. <laughs> it's a true story. It is a this true is, story. that's what makes it funny. It's a true story. I had a rattle in my chest. It was like rattling. So, uh, I, I had, uh, I was still working. So I, I had gone to some school, some law enforcement school. And, uh, I, I remember I was in the car and I started having one of these coughing fits. Mm-hmm. This rattle in my thing, and I coughed so hard. True story, folks. I coughed out a piece of a cashew. <laughs> now I have to tell you something, though. <laughs> when you eat, you talk very animated at times, <laughs> and I'm sure that's when you swallowed this piece of cashew. Because <laughs> I don't. I see. It's it's like chew with your mouth closed. Paul, but I'm like talking. Oh yeah, making a point. And how many times do I tell you, please be careful. Don't don't talk. You do just, tell me, just please swallow be first and then talk, because he gets too excited, and then blah blah blah, blah and then all of a sudden it's like it's in my lung. <laughs> <laughs> I actually coughed. It, honest, it was a piece of whole cashew, like a slice of it, that half. Mm-hmm. It came out of my lung, not my stomach. I'm I'm telling you, I no, coughed it, it the, up. It was the lung. Yeah, and then that, of course, the rattle and everything went away after that. I was healed. Uh, when I told Miss Capel that, I, I told her. And it her, was at work. Was he at called work. me at work. Yeah. I said, I, I fixed it. I <laughs> coughed up a cashew. She she laughed at my calamity. I could have died, man. I might have got that cashew at the AM PM. <laughs> no telling where you got that from. I could have been talking to uh, the clerk, you know, talking about the Slurpee machine or whatever. Well, that I do know for sure. You were talking and that's how it got in your lung. We're not perfect, Miss Bear. <laughs> <laughs> True story that actually happened. And I do have to be careful when I eat because, yeah, I'll suck things up. <laughs> <laughs> if not through my nose, through my lungs. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's horrible. <laughs> it's just a horrible thing. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm, Is I'm it a go- child baby time yeah, now? All yeah. Right. Ciao, babies. And thank you so much for your prayers and for your support and for listening to us. And I look forward to hearing from you. Good night.